Hello, welcome to Pike Creek Farm. If this is your first time here, thank you so much for stopping in. My name is Renee and I live in the Thumb of Michigan and I like to do videos on canning and vintage recipes and baking and life here at Pike Creek Farm. And part of which is keeping a stocked pantry because I love canning and I just like to have food there available on a easy basis. But today I'm here because I'm part of a collaboration, 30 Days of Preparedness. It's being organized by Michelle and JJ at Big Valley Living and they've done a great job. This was originally started a few years ago by Sutton's Days and different people have kind of taken the helm for the past few years and kept it going, which is great because there's this great wealth of information that can be shared with everyone. Collaboration is being sponsored by Michelle and JJ, and they are going to be giving away a $100 Amazon gift card. But they also have a national sponsor. They have Avid Armor. They are going to give away a chamber vacuum sealer. That's an amazing prize. It makes vacuum sealing so easy, and you have so many different things you can do with it. It's wonderful, just amazing. So that's a wonderful prize. And then there's also another prize. There's gonna be a signed book by Lisa at Sutton's Days. It's the book that she just came out with, I think about a month ago, month and a half ago, 100 Days to Preparedness. And lots of information there. It's gonna be signed by Lisa too, so it'll be fun. Those prizes will be given away October 1st at 4 p.m. Pacific time. So like I'm in Eastern time zone, so it'll be 7 p.m. here. And the winners are gonna be drawn from random comments on the videos. So there's gonna be a playlist down below. Make sure you watch all the videos. There's some really great channels and some different ones. I mean, just a wide variety. So what I'm doing today is for National Preparedness Month, I was approached by Keystone Meats and I was like, hmm, canned meat. I'm a canner. I can meat. I love my meat. But I've canned my whole adult life, but I didn't start pressure canning no, until about seven years ago. And it took a lot to get me to that point. I read and read and read and watched videos and did research online and but not everyone wants to take that leap. Some people are afraid of it, don't have the time, don't have the money, don't to buy a pressure canner, don't wanna, don't want that whole process. And what is cool about Keystone Meats is you don't have to. I mean, it's here in the can already and it is, this says beef and sea salt. That's all that's in there. And this has been, they sent me a little flyer. Keystone is four generations of one family. Six, over 60 years they've been doing this. There's ground beef. And I know ground beef is, some people like canned ground beef and others don't. I'm gonna use this today in a recipe and show you one of the ways, but I like canned beef, ground, ground beef. I like canned beef too. Here's chicken, so like ugly chicken. So all natural, chicken fully cooked, 98% fat free and no water added. So it's just how I can it. And they are 28 ounce. So they're a, a generous serving, you know. Here's turkey. So what, you can make turkey a la king, hot turkey sandwiches, chicken or turkey salad sandwiches. You can make turkey tetrazzini. There's all kinds of turkey and stuffing. Oh, doesn't that sound good with some cranberry sauce? Mm -mm. Pork. So you want a fast pulled pork sandwich? You have this pork. And then the last one, which I put too far away, is beef. So hot beef sandwiches, different casseroles, soups. You can make stews, you can make chili. So why have canned meat in your house? Why? 
I can just go to the freezer and get some meat. Well, yeah, you can, unless there's a power outage. Um, then you can't just go in your freezer. But you, if you have this, you can still make a meal. I get home from work, I'm dead tired, just so tired. And the thought of, if maybe I forgot to take out meat to defrost, but then cooking it and browning it and see, I can have fast food with a can of meat. I don't need to order pizza or go out. So it's a way of saving money and keeping a budget and eating healthier. It's also great to take camping. It's, um, it's, you run out of room in your freezer eventually, or at least I do, my husband's a hunter. I can keep lots of meat on the shelf. So I can have meat for a long time out. So let's say my husband got sick or I got sick. Either one of us would be able to keep making meals for the other one. We would have everything in the house. We live in Michigan and we get some pretty bad snowstorms. Not last year, but usually. I don't have to worry about hitting that store and trying to hit get everything into to make meals for the next couple of days if we're snowed in. I always have it here. It's always here. But what I wanna show you today is I'm gonna use the ground beef because it's the one meat that everyone's like, kind of like, really? I'm gonna use this and I'm gonna make a vintage casserole from the 80s, one my mom made that I just loved and my husband likes it and I'm gonna make it from entirely shelf stable items. It's a green bean, mashed potato, casserole. So, and I'm using it from not my home canned items today. So I got some Del Monte beans, can of tomato soup, French fried onion rings, instant potatoes that just take water. And usually we put some cheese on top I could put Parmesan, but I happen to have Thrive Life. I get Thrive Life foods, not every month, but I do keep certain things on my shelf. And cheese is one of the things I wanted to have there in case I don't have cheese and I decide I want to have tacos or a casserole with the cheese on top. I don't have to run to the store. You know, and the store is 10 miles from here. So I'm not, I don't have to go 20 miles just to buy a block of cheese. And this can goes a long ways. So I'm gonna bring you down and we're gonna go in the kitchen and we're gonna make that. And we'll get to see what this meat looks like inside and the texture of it and how it works in a recipe. I thought that was the best way is for both of us to check it out. So I'm gonna get together everything over in the kitchen and we will make this together and we'll see what the finished product looks like. So here's everything we'll need. Um, I'll probably add some seasoning like garlic and pepper. I'm not sure oh, it's gonna need much salt, maybe a little bit. So I'm gonna open up this can and let's see what it looks like. Now what meats do I home can. I do chicken, I do pork, I do beef, I do venison, and I do ground beef. And I do different variations of it like meatballs and soups and stews and stuff. Now I'd like to crisp up my ground beef some. You don't have to do that. Canned meats are fully edible right from the can. Just like, you know, I'm sure you've maybe had other brands of chicken. It's perfectly processed, fully cooked and safe. So if it was a situation where I didn't have my stove or something, I could just dump this into the, and put it on top of the, I could just dump this into a pan with all the ingredients and warm it up on top of our wood stove and then make the potatoes to go on top. Heat some water up on the stove. 
I'm gonna drain the liquid off. I don't want it too liquidy when I go to crisp it up. So let's put that in there. I'm gonna put, take some of that fat off too. Some fat's the flavor, but we'll put that over there. And this is um, more solid than my canned, home canned. So it does need some breaking up. I'm gonna try a little bite. It has good texture. Some more liquid came out. So I'm gonna let this cook on out of it. And the fat was melting. Break this up. This is a nice amount of meat. Okay, seasoning. I can taste the salt, not overly salty, but I can taste that it's been salted. So I'm gonna add some onion powder. Some black pepper. And just a little bit of seasoned salt. I'm going to open up the green beans now. Drain out the juice. Dump in the cut green beans. Open up a can of tomato soup. And I don't always use, you know, canned soups for cooking, but I do have some recipes that I like that call for it. And I always keep it stocked because it does make for some quick meals. Okay, I'm gonna turn this down. I'm gonna add some more garlic powder. We don't need any more salt. Next, I need to make the mashed potatoes, and they just call for two cups of boiling water. I'm just going to heat my water up in the microwave since I do have electricity. And then for my cheese, I need to refresh it. So I need to put it in a little bowl with some, it says one cup of cheese, three and a half tablespoons of cold water. I'm only doing a half a cup because I'm not making macaroni and cheese. I am just putting a sprinkle on top. I'm not sure if we're going to need one or two potatoes. So let's start with one. Then the recipe calls for the french fried onion rings. So I'm gonna put half the container in with the potatoes. Let's put the potatoes on. I'm gonna put some more water on and make the second batch. This looks better. And then I'm gonna pop this in the oven to get toasty brown on top and everything bubbly. And then we will sprinkle the cheese and the rest of the onion rings on top. So I'm gonna set the timer for, it takes 20 to 25 minutes. And I'll bring you back. 
Here it is out of the oven. Do not grab the hot handle. I did. And now we're gonna sprinkle the cheese on top. It's all refreshed. And then we will sprinkle the onion the last bit on top. Now we're gonna put it back in the oven. She turned, I turned the oven off and we're just gonna melt everything. So it's not like it needs to cook a long time. And then let it cool because it's hot. Here it is out of the oven. I need to let it chill, not chill. I need to let it cool some. Here it is all dished up. And you can see the meat looks fine. Potatoes, crunchy onion rings, green beans, and the green beans are still nice and held their shape. So, let's take a bite. Just like mom's. There's the meat. I get it to focus there. See, it has good texture. It is not mushy. I just wanted to show how you can have a prepared pantry without being a canner. You can still have everything and have easy meals and be prepared for whatever happens, whether it's weather related, financial related, just fatigue. And I also wanna thank Michelle for inviting me to participate in this collaboration. And I'll have all the information down below about the giveaway and all the sponsors and the playlist because there are some great videos and you don't want to miss a day. So thank you for joining me and seeing how I use my pantry for wonderful meals. See you next time at Pike Creek Farm.